I'll bet you Billy Graham <laughs> never had to stand up after a little Stevie Ray Vaughan. <laughs> this may be the first in the history of mankind, in humankind. Oh, feel the energy? See how it shifted? That's what it's about. That's this idea of consciousness. And we're here going to explore this idea of how do we increase our consciousness? How do, we, how do we take the consciousness that we are and do we increase it? And it's all about becoming more aware every moment, every breath of the truth. So we talk each and every week about personal transformation. And personal transformation is simply developing our consciousness to be aware of what has always been there. You see, it's nothing new. This is the, this is the, it's like the secret is right here. It's been here from the time we were born and we keep going like this, pushing it away. Don't want to see it. Don't want to see it. Don't want to see it. And there's this illusion that we have to go places, meet new people, do new things to find something that is already right with us. Wow. Think about that. The key, the key here is that when Jesus was on this planet, when he was demonstrate this pure oneness, this pure connection, he said, it was really clear, it is not I that does this, but it is the Father in me. The Father in me. What does that mean? It means that there's a divine, infinite in presence because the Father means the allness, the fullness, the magnificence of God, everywhere present. It's that in me and that as it's in me, because I am it in expression, I am that child as I vocalize out my command to the universe, the universe or the God presence, the God power, call it subjective mind, call it the subconscious mind, call it the law, call it the soul, call it the soil, doesn't matter what you call it. it takes that word and it creates. See, so the consciousness becomes understanding who we are. That's it. That's all we have to understand. We have to understand who we are. So if I walk up to you, what do you tell me? Oh, I'm a, I'm a vice president of uh, financial planning or I am a graphic artist. You see, we've identified the wrong thing with I am. That is what we do. But what are you? You're an individual creator here to express and experience magnificence in ways that have never been expressed before. Because you are unique and whole and perfect as you are, and the only way that you can express is the way you choose. No one else on this planet is going to choose how to express the divine creative power the way you're going to choose it. So if you're starting to look for what is it mine to do, what do you love? What brings you the greatest joy? Become conscious of what brings you the greatest joy and speak it. Constantly speak it. Never stop speaking it. Don't allow anyone to distract you. There's so many people that come in and counsel with me. So many people that come and counsel with other ministers that are, in my daily, that are in my life. And the one thing they say is, you know, my mind understands this. My mind has a desire for this. My, mod, my mind nods in agreement with my desire. And then it goes and does what it wants. Does that resonate with you? Does everyone here have the desire to become more aware, to become more creative, to take power in their lives, and to really get out there and create, right? You all have that desire. It's right there on the edge. You know it. You know everything I'm talking about already. I'm not speaking anything new. There's, nothing, there's no new revelations coming out of me today. Because everything's already been thought. Everything's already in infinite mind, and you're tapped into that. But then... It's not enough to desire because we've taken as old as we are. I'm going to look around the room and I don't know, but 14, 14. So from 14 to however old, for however many years we've been on the planet, we've allowed habits of thought to be formulated in us. 
We have not questioned the birthing of those habits. We've not looked at them. We've not examined them. We've blindly taken them in. And over the period of our times, from the time we are born to where we are now, those habits are so ingrained in us that when it comes time and you have the desire, my mind would like to do this, and then it goes back what? It goes back to the habit. Because it's a habit. The key thing to becoming more conscious is to be aware that we have these thought patterns. We may not be aware of the actual thought pattern we're having, but when we become aware that there is a thought pattern out there, now we can say, okay, this, I may not be aware of it, this is my experience, let me build a thought pattern, a habit that supports this. And we dedicate our whole life to it. Every moment of our daily, of our breath, we dedicate to that. The key thing that I understand, it's about clearing a path. We have a desire. The next step is clearing the path. And in that path, it means a commitment. It means a 100% commitment to the best of our ability to go forth and shift. And what does that mean? Well, it means that um, we can't play victim. No one ever does anything to us. Ever. Because no matter what they do, you're always at choice as to how you respond. Your response is a conscious decision, or maybe it's an unconscious decision at this time, but you have the ability to respond consciously. And when you realize, if you truly understand that you are one with the infinite, that everything you desire is full, whole, and perfect, right where you are in this moment, then do you care about anyone else's opinion? Do you really care that someone does anything? No, because you're the, you're the creator. But the second we go into this mode that, oh, they said this, this person did this, and we allow drama into our lives, or we say, no, it wasn't that, it was the meds that did it, or it was the alcohol that did it, or it was the woman I'm dating that did it, or the man that I'm dating, or it was my father, or it was my mother. What we're doing is we are passing our responsibility and we're making a choice to be victims. When you came into this world, you were not dependent on anything. You were birthed. You were birthed pure, whole, and perfect in that moment. And then you were guided to a mother, and that mother took you in and provided you with the nurture, nutrients to help you grow. And together with a father or without a father, or maybe it's an extended family, it doesn't matter, you were given a safe place to grow. However, one of the things that we forget is that wherever we are, there's a mental atmosphere. A mental atmosphere simply means the pattern of all the thoughts around us. So a child, let's say, in the midst of the ghettos of Detroit, is in a specific mental atmosphere when they're born. A child in Highland Park, Texas, is born into a different mental atmosphere. One is not better than the other. They're different mental atmospheres, and those atmospheres will probably determine the belief structure of those two children. If you were born in East Texas, West Texas, if you were born in Maui, if you were born in China, you were born with a mental atmosphere, and it's probably not your own individual atmosphere because we're not aware of that. When you think about this idea of awareness, it's very few people in the world are even progressing in awareness. I think it's growing in this moment. So most people are functioning in an unaware state. The patterns of our thoughts are there all the time. And everything in society feeds those patterns of thought. And what does that do? It takes us out of being conscious. It puts us actually in a conscious, unconscious state. It makes us comfortably numb. What is the American dream? The American dream is there to make you comfortably numb. Can I be more clear about that? Think about what the American dream is. Well, you have your house in the suburbs, you have your two nice cars, your 2.3 kids, you have this job, you go out to the country club, you do these things, yada, 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 yada. Where does it say that you are an individual that is free to express uniquely and wholly as yourself and that there is no mold that you need to fit in? See, that's the divine dream. I want to buy into that dream more than I want to buy into the American dream. 
The greatest gift about America is that there is a freedom here. There is a freedom to choose. There's a freedom to disagree. There's a freedom to be unique. That's what I embrace about the United States. Because in a lot of other countries, you still are free to do that, but if you do express it, there could be a consequence coming back at you. But here, we have the ability to express our freedom. So when I say the American dream is not what I want, I am not knocking this country. I'm saying I love this country. I love where I live because it has given me the freedom to expand and grow and become the uniqueness of what I am. And the thing about it is, is that you're going to have debates all over about politics and stuff. I don't debate politics. I try, I try not to debate politics. <laughs> I'm still in human form, I still have opinions, and there are a lot of people here that will testify to that. <laughs> but what I try to realize is that everyone has a choice. And so when people ask me to consider, what about this health care issue? I say the question is, I'm not concerned with insurance. Because if everyone was focused on health, we wouldn't need a doctor. Did you hear that? If we were truly focused on health, if health was one of those values that we had and we understood that there's an infinite power and presence within us, a power within us that is perfect, that is divine with the creator, that knows how to create billions and zillions of galaxies, can birth a planet, can birth a sun, can birth a baby, and that power is existing in us and it's responding directly to us based on our belief, then the power to create health is simply taking the belief and expanding it so that it's without doubt. Most of the time we say we have the belief and the belief is not there because the belief is what you demonstrate. Can you hear that? Your life is a demonstration of your beliefs no matter what you want to say about it. So if that's the case, then what it tells us, the mirroring back to us is that let's work on the belief even more. Let's keep doing it. And here's the thing, maybe we can't do it alone at first. So we surround ourselves with like-minded people that help us build a consciousness like that, that support us in this consciousness. And what happens is as we build this conscious belief, we become so centered in an idea of truth that things that no longer support that value fall away because they've lost their importance in our lives. So when I demonstrate where, what I'm doing, I'm not telling you to do what I do. Does that make sense? Okay, because what I do is unique for me. So when I went to Vipassana, which is a 10-day silent meditation retreat, uh, would I go five or six weeks ago, I went. And I came back, I had a shift in consciousness because I went there with an intention of shifting. And what I went there as an intention was to spend more time focusing on creating and not focusing on being... Um, my mind molded by outside influences. So I've cut down my time on electronics, my phone and my Facebook and all of that type of thing. But one of the other things I've done is I've stopped watching television. And when I was writing this talk, it really came to me. The reason I stopped watching television is not because it's bad. It's just not serving where I want to be. Does that make sense? So the time that I'm not watching television now, I'm reading. I'm doing extra meditation. I'm doing more affirmations. I'm actually in meaningful conversations with people. Conversations about things about how do we grow? How do we become more? How do I see the truth in myself? How do I help you see the truth? How do we expand this consciousness in the world? How do we create a greater community where people can come and be loved and love each other and be supported no matter what our backgrounds, no matter what our history has been? And what I'm finding is that that shift is giving me a greater desire to even know more. You see, this is the idea that we think that, well, this is my thought. This is where I want to be. And if I get there, it's great. No, the second we start approaching where we want to be, the divine within us says, no, that's not enough. There's always more. You see, there's an innate desire within us to constantly, eternally be growing and becoming more. And what I found is that when I was numbing myself, I was not very happy because I was going against what? My innate desire to become more. It's not to become a better statisti statistician of football. Because I am a huge, I was a huge football fan. It was just then when I was in Vipassana, missing playoff games. Missing playoff games. 
And when I got out, I realized I didn't miss it because my mind was centered something different because I'd substituted something of meaning in my life. And I'm not saying for you to do that, but I'm saying to evaluate things in your life right now that are taking up your time and are they serving your highest desire to express and to experience love? What is love? Love is, number one, self-acceptance. Anytime we have an addiction of any sort, and we all have addictions, I don't care who you are in this room, you are addicted to something. You have a habit of thought that is constantly working in you in this moment and in every moment, and that habit of thought is blindly creating in your life. When we have this addiction, what we're saying is we're not enough. We're not enough. And when we have that addiction, what we're also saying is, I don't love you enough the way you are, so I'm going to hide amongst whatever this is. See, addictions are hiding. What are you hiding from? You're hiding from creating. We were meant to create. That's our only purpose. Think about that. When we talk about the definition of the soul, the individual soul is the point of consciousness where the infinite has chosen to uniquely express itself, uniquely express itself as whole, perfect, and complete for the experience of experiencing itself. So as each of us, the divine expresses itself through our choices uniquely, and we are meant to create. That's our only purpose. Do you see that? And so we enter into relationships with people for what? To support us and to grow us in our ability to create. And if you find someone who's got a vision like that and you can jointly create something, that's where you get into collaboration. Collaboration for me is a, is a magnificent spiritual principle. This is why we should be entering into relationships not to raise families. You see, we've got the wrong definitions. To raise a family means, what does that mean? But to say, I'm entering into a relationship with someone so we can create together, oh, now we can create a family. We can create little creators. We can create little creators that have an environment that's free to create new things. We can create a safe environment so when they're toddlers and they're not in the world, they can make all these mistakes. And we're conscious that we let them make all these mistakes because when they do, they're testing their creative power and there's a law of cause and effect working so they'll have an effect with every cause and in that, they get their lesson as opposed to mom or dad saying, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. You see, they don't care about that. You don't care about that. All you care about is the experience. Why do you care about the experience? Because it's the result of creation and the only reason you're here is to create. You can create what we would call positively, and you can create what we would call negatively. The law, God doesn't care. Because from the aspect of the divine, which is the allness that exists everywhere present, there is no judgment because it can't judge because it means it would have to compare against something. Well, there's nothing for the allness to compare against because there's nothing outside of it. Does that make sense? So the allness... It's allness is not going to create, well, I think I'll create this world, and then I'm going to create everyone as me, and then part of me, I'm going to condemn the hell. Think about that. That's such a ridiculous illusion that we've been brought under that's in race consciousness. People are so afraid of the devil and hell and making sin. Sin is simply the idea that we've gone in the wrong direction from that which we are seeking to be in. And so if we're in that direction, shift your thought, create a new belief, go in a new direction. You see, that's forgiveness. That's the forgiveness you're seeking. What's forgiveness? Shift your thought, go in a new direction. You don't have, will you forgive me? Will you please forgive me? Nonsense. That's saying something outside you needs to approve you so that you can be well. Do you hear that? We have so many habits that we blindly accepted into our lives about getting an outside influence on us. Now, I want to be really clear here because a conscious person is always living in love. A conscious person is never out to hurt anyone consciously. Everything is about giving. Everything is about being. Everything is about expressing love. So when we become conscious, it's natural for us to give, to serve, to love, to support, to nourish, to care. 
It's natural for us to be with someone and for them to feel safe. Because in the allness of God, when we get into that stillness, into that quiet, either in meditation, in prayer, listening to music, looking into the eyes of a child, it doesn't matter. We feel the safety. We feel the love. We feel the peace. Those are conscious moments. If you want a conscious moment today, walk into our children's room and look into the eyes of one of the babes. Look into little Indy. Indy's, what, six months old now? Just let her look into your eyes. Chances are she'll stick her little tongue out at you because that seems to be her game right now. And you will feel a sense of love. Look into the eyes of the older children and the excitement they have about life. What I so love is the children growing up with these ideas. Chris and Danielle have a beautiful, beautiful son, Evan. And when Evan was asked to take a pill the other day from the doctor, he denied him that. He wouldn't take it. He wouldn't take it, he, no matter what they did. And finally, the parents got wise, and they said, we'll look for something other than this medicine, and they found it, and he healed. See, that child is born with innate sense that there's a power within them that knows how to heal everything. What I'm saying to you is there's a power within you that knows everything. The power that is within you that knows everything has always been there. It will always be there. It's been with you from the moment you took your first breath and before. That power will be with you after you take your last breath. The key thing is, have you tapped in? Can you see that you don't have to go outside for that? Can you see that through a constant practice of seeing and visualizing that, you are the source, you are the love, you are the peace, you are the joy, you're everything you've ever looked for. You want to be with yourself. You love to be with yourself. More importantly, you need to be with yourself. Because without being in yourself, you can't be conscious. And without being consciousness, you can't experience love. Without experiencing love, there's no point to life. I want to thank you for joining us today. I am so grateful that you took your time to watch or listen to this message. If you found this message beneficial, I would ask you to go to our website. Once there, click on the Contribute button and experience the joy of conscious and purposeful giving. It is through your gifts that we are able to bring this message to the world. I would also ask you to please share this message with anyone you feel might benefit. Again, I want to thank you for joining me and the Agape community as together we bring joy to life.